So now that you understand some of the fundamentals of making Android applications in our Xamarin framework, uh, Xamarin tools for Visual Studio, let's check out how to play audio in our apps. So we often want to make uh, audio sounds play at certain times, like maybe you're building a, a game, or we want to be able to play things like MP3 files because you're, you're making some kind of audio-based application. So whatever the case, we often need to be able to play these audio files. And when we are in Android, the class that we uh, primarily need to learn how to use is the Media Player class. And it is what is going to uh, run and, and take care of all of these audio uh, kind of subsystem applications. So to get started, I am going to create an Android application. Right, this is a blank app. I'm just naming mine Android Sounds, uh, whatever you want to name it. Go ahead and click OK so Visual Studio can get that all set up. So go ahead and get your main uh, GUI layout set up uh, opened. And I like to just go ahead and get rid of that button that they put in here and get rid of this code in my main activity so that we're all ready to start. So in our Android application we're going to come over here to our Solution Explorer and under the Resources folder we're going to create a subfolder. And so I'm going to right click on Resources and I'm going to go to Add, New Folder and I'm going to name it Raw. And so this is going to be our Resources that uh, are our raw audio files that we are going to learn how to play in our application. So I went ahead and downloaded an mp3 file that's just a sound effect of like an audience applause. You can use any mp3 file that you have uh, readily available for this exercise. But I'm going to put it into that raw folder. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to add existing item, and then from that window, I have it on the desktop, so I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to find my MP3 file and I'm going to click Add. So that adds it as a resource inside of Visual Studio so that I can then reference it in my application. And then when I later, you know, thinking down the road, when I package this application for distribution, all of our resources have to be kind of registered and part of that solution so that not only are they accessible, but they're going to travel together and ultimately be deployed wherever we send this. So I talked about the Media Player class. And so this is the class that controls all of the, the methods and properties for playing different types of, in this case, audio. Uh, but we can also do things like display images and play video with Media Player as well. Before we get started writing our code, we need to go through and request permissions on the device, which we do from inside of our AndroidManifest.xml file. To get to the Android Manifest to adjust permissions from within Visual Studio, we come up to Project and go to Properties. And then in this section, you'll find the Android Manifest and at the bottom, the required permissions. Now you don't need special permissions just to play audio, but if you did want to create an application that did any kind of recording, you would need to come in here and find the record audio permission and check that. So any other permissions that you ever need to uh, use in your application, you just check the boxes in here. That's how the application communicates to the Android operating system on the device, whether or not it needs particular permissions. Okay, so let's get started with uh, some code on how to play an audio sound. So we're going to need the Android Media Using Statement, so go ahead and put that in. And I'm going to create a class variable of type Media Player. And so Media Player, I'm just going to call it Player, is our class object that we can use to start or stop audio files in our application and in the on create section this is where I'm going to instantiate my object so I have media player create in this particular activity and then what do I want to play well it's under resource raw 
and applause is the name of my item that I want to play. Now I'm going to set up a button on my UI so that when the button clicks then the uh, file will play. So I'm going to go get a button and I can come over to properties and call it play button and I'm going to say play audio so then I can come into my main activity and I can set up my button click event And sometimes if your IDs don't come up, sometimes it takes a couple of tries <laughs> for those resources to actually show up. But once you've got it, you can go on. All kinds of bugs in the IDE all the time. Okay, so we have our click event. Now in order to kind of fire off our media player um, object that we have set up, we would just use player.create, or I'm sorry, dot .start, and that should start us playing our audio file. So you can run this right now and, and test it out. In fact, I was going to do that so that you could see how this worked. Uh, so let me give this a run. Oops. I'm on an emulator. I need to be on the actual device. There we go. So I can go ahead and run and get this built over on my device. And if you continue to have this kind of problem, uh, where sometimes your resources don't don't register right, uh, sometimes you have to come up and clean the build. So you can do a clean solution and then rebuild, uh, and that usually fixes it. Okay, so I have my application running over on my device, and I didn't figure that visuals were really needed for this one because I hit the play audio button, and that mp3 file plays. Now, right now, it just plays the duration of whatever mp3 file that you've given it, and if we wanted to, say, play something and then stop it, or pause it and be able to pick it up where we left off, uh, then there's a couple of other different commands we would need. So let's add a few more buttons so that we can see how this works. So I'm going to throw another button out here for pause and then another button out here for stop. And so let's set up properties on those. We'll call this the pause button. And so this is probably even more important if you chose a fairly long mp3 file because you have to listen to the whole duration or you can click stop in Visual Studio and quit debugging. Okay, so let's go over here and set up our click events for these. So we're going to have our pause button. and our stop button and we can set up our click events for these okay so I have the click events set up for pause and stop and these are pretty much exactly the way it was to start it so we would have our player uh, dot pause and our player dot stop. Okay, so I can test this out and we can make sure that it, it works and that the audio will actually pause or stop. Now with the pause, while this is building, uh, if you use the pause, it will uh, just pause the, the playing of the audio 
and then by clicking start again or using the start method it will resume the pause location of the playback and so I can play I could pause and hit play again and resume or I can stop completely and that will uh, then just stop the audio so if I hit play again it would just play the audio again for me so really and then the best thing to do when you're all done is to release your resources so that you're not um, holding on to that object and that that item in memory when you no longer need it so this has just been a real quick introduction to how to play audio files you can have any number of files in your resources section you would just need a different create statement for each one and then you would just call the start pause or stop as appropriate within your application